Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before we get to that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel, watching my videos, subscribing to my channel, and commenting. I so, so enjoy the, in interacting in the comments. And I'm so thankful for the growth of my channel. It's amazing what you've done. And it's all because of you, so thank you. I have a few items for the news today. The first one is NBA legend John Stockton is part of a new lawsuit against the state of Washington that cracked down on COVID mis misinformation from doctors. Now, when they say crack down, what they mean is that they were trying to take doctors' licenses to practice away from them because these doctors were speaking out against the lies about COVID and the vaccine. That's... <laughs> I never thought we would get to the point in this country where someone would be threatened with the loss of their livelihood if they spoke and said things, true or not. You know, the, the First Amendment is supposed to protect all speech, not just the speech you like. But we've now entered a phase in our history where the government thinks they have the right to shut down people that don't parrot the government line. That is frightening and it's disgusting and it's totally unconstitutional. Obviously, I'll put these links in the description for you, as I always do. <clears throat> the second article is Memphis leftists are outraged that the legislature of Tennessee has passed a law that prevents local governments from tying the police's hands when it comes to arresting people. You know, you're, you're probably familiar with the movement to defund the police. Well, this is all part of that. And now the leftist activists, including a senator in the Texas Senate, are threatening violence if they don't get their way. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's the way to, to get legislation passed, is to threaten violence. <sighs> the third item that I have is a man named Mike Davis who is going to describe for you what's going on today in this uh, Supreme Court. There's a very important case before the Supreme Court today. The state of Missouri sued the federal government because they were co or collaborating with big tech to censor speech. And they have won the case at the trial court level and at the appeals court level, and so now the government is fighting this, fighting for the right to censor your speech all the way to the Supreme Court. So Mike is gonna talk about that. ...is putting pressure on uh, New York banks and insurance carriers not to work with the National Rifle Association. So the Supreme Court is gonna have to come out with a test on how much these government actors can collude with private actors to censor Americans more yeah. liberal be okay <clears throat> that's the first one and now uh, I'm going to show you a couple of little bits from X of Supreme Court justices talking about this case that is being argued right now today officials and Facebook in particular, but also ex exchange between Excuse me. the White House. This is, ju this is Justice Samuel Alito. The White House and other federal officials and Facebook in particular, but also. Okay. I'm trying to get this. The government th there can we go. Do this. this is something I took up with um, Mr. Fletcher. Um, depends on the application of our First Amendment jurisprudence. And okay. This is Justice Katanji Brown. Now listen to the argument. This is a Supreme Court justice. And listen to the argument she's making. There may be circumstances in which the government could um, prohibit certain speech on the Internet. Really? You're a Supreme Court justice and you're making that argument? I mean, do you, do you 
Do you disagree that we would have to apply strict scrutiny and determine whether or not there is a compelling interest uh, and how the government has tailored uh, its regulation? Certainly, Your Honor. I think at the end of every First Amendment analysis, you'll have the strict scrutiny framework in which, you know, in some national security hypos, for example, the government may well be able to demonstrate a compelling interest, may well be able to demonstrate All right, so, so, so the, not every situation will, in which the government engages in conduct that ultimately has some effect on, uh, free, on, on speech necessarily becomes a First Amendment violation, correct? Maybe not necessarily, Your Honor. I guess the top line question I would ask is, has the government set out to abridge the freedom of speech? And in this case, you see that time and time again, because if you control that's F not the test for First Amendment violations. Your Honor, this flows from the plain text of the First Amendment, right? No, I understand, but, but we have a, we have a test for a determination of whether or not the First Amendment is actually violated. So, in such, certain situations, um, uh, you know, the government can actually require that speech be suppressed if there's a compelling interest, right? It can, Your Honor, and I guess what I would say is that the courts below never got to strict scrutiny because the government never raised this. This has never been litigated. The question in this case is whether at the front end the government itself has undertaken Is the action. coercion, is the state action, right? That's it's, the question in this case. And I would urge the court to address the state action issue just like you addressed it in Bantam Books. Use that term four times in Bantam Books. I mean, and could Footnote I just understand, because it seems like a, an extremely expansive argument, I must say. <sighs> Now, let's listen to Justice Alito. House and other federal officials and Facebook in particular, but also some of the other platforms. <clears throat> and I see that uh, the White House and federal officials are repeatedly saying that Facebook uh, and the federal government should be partners. We are on the same team. Officials are demanding answers. I want an answer. I want it right away. When they're unhappy, they, they curse them out. Uh, there are regular meetings, there is constant pestering of, of Facebook and some of the other platforms and they want to have regular meetings and they suggest, why don't you, uh, they suggest rules that should be applied and why don't you tell us everything that you're going to do so we can help you and we can look it over and I thought, wow, I cannot imagine federal officials taking that approach to the, the, the print media, uh, our representatives over there. If you, if you did that to, to them, what do you think the reaction would be? And so I thought, you know, the only reason why this is taking place is because the federal government has got Section 230 and antitrust in its pocket, and it's, uh, to mix my metaphors, and it's got these big clubs available, for, available to it. And so it's treating uh, Facebook and these other platforms like their subordinates. Would you do that to the to the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or the Associated Press or any other big newspaper or wire service? So uh, there's a lot packed in there. I want to give you one very specific answer first and then wrap step back out to the broader context. So specifically, you mentioned demanding an answer right away and cursing them out. The only time that happens is in an email that's about the president's own Instagram account. It's not about... You know, you can couch it in any terms you want to couch it in, but the bottom line is the government censored speech. And for that, they should be slapped down by the Supreme Court with a firm hand. And I certainly hope that is what the result will be. Oh, I'm telling you, it's, it's just mind-boggling to me that we're fighting over the First Amendment. The First Amendment was designed, was written specifically to prevent the government from censoring speech. Specifically. And yet here we are arguing about whether, well, do we really have to do we really have to, or can we just <laughs> can we just do it when we really need to? You know, I mean, come on, what in the world? It's just it's insane to me. It's absolutely insane.
Now I have one last thing I want to show you. And this is uh, Mike Rowe. If you're not familiar with Mike Rowe, he has for years hosted a show called The Dirtiest Jobs. And if you've ever seen it, you know some of those jobs are really dirty. And he's being interviewed and the interviewer asks him, what's the dirtiest job you can think of? No sound. Okay. Hold on. Let's stop. Go back to the beginning. Turn the sound on. And now we go. Why didn't you ever go and do the dirtiest job, which is being a politician? Because there, there are really only two kinds of dirty jobs. There's the kind of disgusting, vile, putrid, soul-deadening, horrific sorts of vocations that at the end of the day, you can take a shower and you're all shiny and new. Yep. And then there's politics. Can't wash that stink <laughs> off. That's, that's, that's gets on the inside. Yeah. Right. And so there's not, there's not enough, uh, people always used to ask me what kind of, what kind of soap I used and what kind of detergent. <laughs> that's I, a good question. I, we should have wrote that. What kind of soap did you use? Did you use what, a gang or dial? What did you use? Uh, why would I use dial? I don't know. Why, why, that's why the only soap I can think why of. Why would you say that? I don't even know soaps. I don't know. It, it, sure you do. There's, there's uh, Irish ivory. Spring, Irish spring, ivory. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I loved Irish spring. You know, you're a strong man, Brian. I, I'm like too strong. Shower up with this. Irish spring. I used to love it, but no, I used uh, lava soap. Okay. Lava it was great. Because it came, literally, it's like pumice. I mean, it would, it would, you could get anything off your body with lava soap. <laughs> uh, that is the proper way <laughs> to end news clips for today. So, obviously, I'll put all these links in the description for you. And always know that I pray for you every day. I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you'll be healthy, and that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.